uh, private, the difference among the private and public schools, your project uh -huh. of uh, after school project, and uh, then the standard release, okay? Okay, um, well again, I'm Sandy Coleman um, from Delaware. I am a uh, K-5 technology teacher. Um, so, uh, which is a public school. So in, in the US we have um, public schools. Uh, there are private schools as well, but different than um, you, Halloween in Brazil. There are, I mean, basically our public schools are um, pretty good. Um, but you know, they need help. But the, I guess I was telling, talking earlier about the politics. Um, there has been some talk with the new administration and a new um, education um, secretary who is wanting to give out what's called vouchers so parents can choose where their children go. That's the idea behind it, um, which, you know, to use these vouchers, whether they're for private schools are charter schools, which are kind of an extension of public schools. But the issue is um, it takes away public funding from the public schools. And the fact of the matter is some of these private schools are not accessible um, for our lower income kids. So even though they're giving out these vouchers with the idea that anybody can use them, the reality is the only ones that are able to use them or get into these, these uh, different schools are already there or have the connections or the means to do it. So in a sense, it's kind of defunding the public schools. And the fear is that we're going to have two types of classes of schools and we're going to bring our public schools down where really only our lower income or socioeconomic or parents that are not that involved. Um, and then you would have your private schools that and then we're losing our funding and it would change the, you know, it's going to, that's my fear that it's going to bring, and a lot of people agree with that, it's going to bring the, the public schools down. So that's one thing that's been happening um, in the US. And the other thing I spoke on was on the new standards um, and the new framework. There's a C uh, computer science K-12 framework that was, uh, I guess it was 2016 when they came up with the new one. And based on that over the summer, Computer Science Teacher Association, which is a strong computer science organization in the US, has taken that framework and has released um, national standards for K through 12, and very promising. And one of the things that that addresses is some, which the movement of the CS for All is, is being more inclusive and bringing more minorities and women into computer science, which in essence will open up more opportunity um, and also make a change to how computer science is now because it actually you know with with how it is now in the u.s it's very um it's, there's no diversity and um very few women very few people of color um that are that are involved so that's kind of what i was spoke on I don't know if that, does that all make sense? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so I was looking for the link for you, um, but I, I don't know why I can't find it. it. I need to open up another window at, and I guess I can share it. Me on the side here, is there a way to share a link? If, if you're interested, if anybody was interested in looking at the framework or the, uh, so the standards. Yes, sure. Yeah. yeah. So maybe I can try to find that while somebody else speaks. How's that uh, sound? The, the green, the and green on the left. Yeah, screen, oh, the screen share. Okay. All right, okay. let me locate it first, and then I'll try to pull it up in screen share. How's that sound? I think I have it bookmarked. Uh, I'm just looking for it. I have too much in my computer. Oh, she just shut off the Hangout, I think. <laughs> but she probably go into the Hangouts again. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. See, I told you I couldn't multitask. But I did find, um, I have it on another tab. I did find, I think I found the standards. Yes. So I have it opened in another link. So if I click on the green and then I click on my other link, you will see it. Is that right? All right. Uh, I'll just show you the page anyway. All right. Let's see. Okay. All right. So here is the page for the uh, CST K-12 um, standards. And actually, the way they've made this, this is a really great site in the sense that you can look at it uh, different ways. You can click over here on level and you can look at by grade band. Or if you're looking to teach a specific concept, um, it's broken down by the concepts. And um, these are where I'm at here, the algorithms and program, computer science, data analysts, impacts of computing and network and internet are like the, uh, are some of the main focus. And then under that, we have the subconcepts, um, and you can pull up by that. And then the practices, it's kind of like a 2D um, way of teaching. You have your concepts and then you have your practices. And the idea is to teach a concept within those practices together, similar to what we've done with our science standards, the NGSS. And you, it, it's quite extensive, but it's very helpful. They have a progression chart, which I like, which will show it across the grade bands and how the concepts and practices can be applied at different grade levels and how they should be. So they help each other. So that's basically, um, and they have a glossary and a little bit about the authors here as well. And if you go to the about section, it talks about some of the reasons behind it of what they're doing. Um, so that's basically what, what we have. So how do I unscreenshot? But anyway, so that's it. I don't know if, I, if you can see it, the link. Uh, uh, sorry, can um, you share the link uh, on the discussion on the right? Yeah, yeah, let me, okay, so I'm gonna make a copy of that. All right, and, okay. and then I'll go back. All right, so where is, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, do I go into the, I'm gonna go into the toolbox, is that where we'll find the way to share a link? Nope. No, and the right, uh, and the right, there is the group chat. Do you see this? I see this already now. And on the, on the bottom, uh, you can uh, write any message. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, in the chat, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, there we go. You see, right. I wrote for someone. All right. This yeah, there we go. So yeah, so it's, it's interesting. I have started to, I haven't read all of it, but I've started to peruse through it. Let me on, how do I on screen share? Um, but I've started to peruse through it, and, um, and it's, I, it helps me because it's giving me guidance on what I should be teaching and at what age band. And it has, and from that, you know, it, the hope is to bring some consistency throughout, you know, so that's what they're doing. So I, I've been really happy with that. So how do I on screen share? Because I know you're probably bored of looking at my, my here. Uh, one all right. I don't know. I'm still, I think I'm stuck. I'm all I'm looking at is a circle. Um, Eloisa, can you help? Did I break it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay, good. I didn't want to break the hangout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was watching to the people who made it, the, the, the task force, and I was expecting to see names like Mitch Riznik or, and, uh, or some people from the MIT Media Lab, but I think nobody was from the MIT Media Lab to do this. No, and, and actually this is maybe a little bit different than um, maybe some of the, uh, the philosophy behind it. Um, I think the MIT Media Lab and Mitch's 
way of thinking with the play, the, the four P's and all, which is definitely awesome in the way I, I like to, to teach, is not always echoed throughout. Um, and I would say that this is more traditional, um, although they are getting more to be like hands-on and the idea of doing it with the practices, but not quite at um, the level of MIT uh, and Mitch Resnick's philosophy and Seymour Papert. Although I think there is a little bit of a discussion of that in there and, and some indication of it, but not to, to that level. But the concepts of the computer science are solid in there, I think. And I like the uh, part about um, the inclusion. Um, uh, do, you, do you remember the, the, the definition of computational thinking of Mitch Riznik? Uh, like uh, he said, like concepts, practice, and perspective. Yeah. He divided this into three parts, uh, and I, 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 in the, uh, in, the uh, in your curriculum, I saw this. I saw concepts and practices. So I was thinking that maybe they were uh, behind this. This is uh, my point. Right. Yeah. It's. I don't. Yeah. I think they could go further, but for what we have had, which has been nothing really, it's a step in the right direction, and there is some guidance and. For somebody like me to have some guidance on concepts, and strictly when we're talking about computer science, um, I like the progression, not necessarily, and I, so there's no lessons involved with that. I mean, that's gonna be up to the teachers or maybe to, to take that guidance or take that and to incorporate, in my I my idea is, is I have a framework or something to follow in the sense of what concepts I should be teaching. Now, how I teach those concepts, I'm more of the mind to have it more to be more playful and, and um, you know, and, 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 and interactive for the kids and not, you know, not as traditional. It can't be because it's not going to open up. It's not going to get the kids um engaged or, or wanting to do it because that's the problem with computer science um at least in my experience I, that's what my major was back in the 80s and i went to college i took computer science and as soon as i graduated i did nothing with computer science because it was taught to me in a way that did not give me the idea that i could create i could express myself it was I mean, I honestly thought it was boring and awful. I just wanted to make it through college and get my degree. It wasn't until later when, you know, I started playing around with personal computers because I'm old. There were no PCs back then. <laughs> I was doing it on big mainframes and stuff like that, that I started on my own exploring personal computers and learning myself that I started to actually embrace it and love it. But because the way it was presented to me, it was something I never pursued. I didn't become a programmer. I didn't do that later in life. And then when I became into like my fourth career of teaching, which I kind of fell into, um, that's when I really started to explore. And actually it was through Scratch that I saw that this is something that, wow, if I had had this when I was younger, I, maybe I would have gone a different direction. And I, I mean, as a learner myself, because this was all new to me as well, I was able to express myself and, and to this day, I'm still in scratch making projects and expressing myself. My coworker had a birthday the other day, so I remixed a project for him that I had made originally for scratch day with the cat singing a Beatles song, happy birthday. And I presented that to him at a, you know, at school. And it's just, that's what I want to get my kids and my students to do, to see it differently than I saw. Cause I was,